Hello, this is Andrea from Verbling.com, and this is an English lesson on reading and pronunciation. We will be reading poems and short stories together, and you will get to work on your pronunciation. Um, English has a lot of different pronunciation sounds with our vowels and our consonants, so you will get to hear me read some uh, poems and short stories in English. I will read, you can listen, and then you can read, and I will help you. Again, my name is Andrea, this is Verbling.com, and this is a class on reading and pronunciation. If you have a ticket, please join, and we can get started. I have two poems today and one short story. If you are working on your pronunciation, how you say your words, this is a good class for you. So again, my name is Andrea, this is Verbling.com, and this is a class on reading and pronunciation. You will hear me read uh, poems and short stories, and then you will get to read as well. And I will help you with individual words and phrases that might be a little bit more difficult to pronounce. So again, my name is Andrea. This is Verbling.com, and this is a reading and pronunciation class. We will read poems and short stories to work on our pronunciation and also our timing of our words, the rhythm of our words. So if you have a ticket, you may join, and we will get started. My name is Andrea, this is Verbling.com, and this is a reading and pronunciation class. We will get to read some poems, and you will also read some short stories, and you will listen to me read as well, and I will help you with your pronunciation. English is different from other languages. Um, in English, you have to be able to pronounce everything very clearly. Um, and in any language, if you are talking, you need to have good pronunciation so people can hear you. English um, does not have the same sounds for every letter. Sometimes some words are spelled similarly, but they are pronounced differently, especially with your vowel sounds. So we will work on that. Uh, we will read together. I will read for you, and then you will also read after me, and then we can work on our pronunciation that way in our reading. Hi, Marco. Good morning, teacher. Good morning, teacher. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Doing good. Thank you. And we have Umberto. I'll let your chat load there. Um, everybody go to the Google chat. I will put links in there for our poems and short stories. Um, Humberto, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, how are you? Uh, I'm fine, I'm fine. This is my, my first class here, and uh, I don't know uh, how perform this uh, this way of, of, of learning English. Okay, well, welcome. I'm <laughs> glad you. you're here. And we have Joy. Welcome back. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. And you? Doing good. Thank you. Um, we have, I think we have an almost full class today. We may have a few more people joining the class. I will give you a link in the chat box. We have two poems today and one short story. So I will put the short story first. We will do the short story. Uh, that will be the first thing we do. And here it is in the chat box. Oh no, everybody's going away. <laughs> oh, okay. Welcome back, Marco. Everybody, yes. <laughs> people started to leave the class after I put the link up. And said, you don't like my short story? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, maybe Umberto will come back. Maybe he has a problem with his internet connection. That could be the problem. Okay. So um, do you have the link now? Did it, did it work? Marco? Okay. Um, go ahead and story. It is called Ginger and Pickles. And I will put it on screen share as well so that you can follow along. 
if you want to just use the link, you can also do that. So here is the screen. In my pronunciation classes, I read a section of our story or a poem so that you can hear it. So you will get to listen to me. And then if it's your turn to read, you will read the same thing back to me. And then I will help you with different words in it. Does everyone have the link? Oh, yay. Umberto, welcome back. Let his chat load there. Hi, Humberto. Humberto, can you hear me? Okay. Hello. Well, hello. Oh, hello. 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 Excuse me. Excuse me. My, my, my microphone was off. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, does everyone have the link now? Umberto, do you need the link again? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay, here is the link one more time in the chat box. I will also have it on screen share so you can just see where we are. Um, I can make this a little bit bigger also so that if you want to read from my screen, you can do that. So let's try that here. Oh, that looks, that's not so good. Okay. Just one second. Okay, so the, the lines of this look a little bit different because of this picture. So this is, looks a little bit different, but we will talk about this in paragraphs. So this is a paragraph. This is a paragraph. So just we'll go, we'll talk about um, when I tell you to read or what to read, I'll tell you which paragraphs to read. So, um, Joy, you can go first. I will read the first two paragraphs here, and then you can read them after me, and then we'll work on individual words. Once upon a time, there was a village shop. The name over the window was Ginger and Pickles. It was a little, small shop just the right size for dolls, Lucinda and Jane, doll cook, always brought their groceries at Ginger and Pickles. Once upon a time there was a village shop. The name over the window was Ginger and Pickles. It was a little small shop just the right size of dolls. Lucinda and Jane dolls, doll, cook always brought their groceries at the ginger and pickles. All right, thank you. When we start a story in English, we often say, once upon a time. So the word time here is going to have a little bit of is going to be a little bit stronger, and then once also is a little bit stronger. So, Joy, just say, once upon a time. Once upon a, once upon a time. Yes, good. One more time. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. Uh-huh, good. Um, Humberto, can you say that phrase also? Once upon a time. Once upon a time. Uh-huh, good, good. All right. Um, hi, Julen. Hi, how are you? Make sure your microphone is on. I see your mouth moving, but I don't hear any sound. Okay, okay. All right, uh, Joy, let's look at the word, um, where is it? Okay. Over. Over. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, do the first half of it is going to be stronger. Over. 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 Uh huh. All right, uh, Julen, is your microphone yeah. working now? Okay. I, I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, how do you say your name? Is it Julen? Julen. Yeah. It's, Julen. It's, okay. Yeah. Good. So uh, I don't think I've had you in a class before. So welcome. Mm. 
Yeah, it's my first time with you, yes. Oh, okay, good, good. So we are just reading a story together. I read. I can. I will read first, so you can hear what it sounds like, and then we'll take turns reading it okay. back. Okay. Okay. So uh, we're just looking at individual words. If you want the link to this, um, I'll put this in the chat box. If you want to look at it on your own okay. browser. Okay. Okay. All right. You. Good. Okay, Joy. Uh, nice. We have uh, four. Uh huh. And then, towards the end, we have bought. Bosh. Bought. Bought. Yes. So the G H is silence. Is just bought. Bought. Yes. Thank you. Thank and you. Tisha. Thank you. Um, Umberto, you will be next. Yes. You will read, starting at the counter inside, and then you'll read down to. Mutton chops. The counter inside was a convenient height for rabbits. Ginger and Pickles sold red spotty pocket handkerchiefs at a penny three farthings. A penny three farthings is just like the price of it. So they're selling them for a certain price at a penny three par far penny three farthings. That's hard for me to say too. Okay, uh, going on. They also sold sugar and snuff and galoshes. In fact, although it was such a small shop, it sold nearly everything, except a few things that you want in a hurry, like boot laces, hairpins, and mutton chops. Okay, go ahead. So, Umberto, read the same thing that I read. Yes, yeah, yeah, excuse me. Okay. Uh, the counter inside was a convenient hay for rabbits. Ginger and pickets sold red spotty pockets, hand, handkerchiefs at a penny tree fartings. They also sold sugar and snuff and galoshes. In fact, although it was such a small shop, it sold nearly everything except a few things that you want in a hurry, like bottle hulls, hairpins, and mountain shops. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second word of this section is counter. Counter. Counter with an ow sound, counter. Counter. Uh-huh. And then go down to handkerchiefs. Hunger chips. Yes. Now, I am American, so in my American accent, I say handkerchiefs. There are a lot of other English accents that where maybe handkerchiefs is pronounced a little differently. So um, be aware of that. Know that there are different ways to pronounce this word, but the way that I pronounce it is handkerchiefs. Hunger chips. Yeah. So it's kind of like um, you. the D is silent in handkerchiefs, more, more like... H A N K E R C H I E F S in, with no D. The way that um, my in my American pronunciation, I say handkerchiefs. Okay. Try one more time. Yes, handkerchiefs. 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 Yeah, that's a hard word. Let's have everyone try that. Uh, Joy, say that. Handkerchiefs. Handkerchiefs. Uh huh. And uh, Julen, try it. Handkerchiefs. Yes, handkerchiefs. Okay, so be aware that there are different ways to say that, and uh, you have just learned the American pronunciation, oh. handkerchiefs. Okay. All right, uh, Umberto, we have snuff. 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 Yeah, try with the s sound at the beginning, snuff. Snuff. Yes, and galoshes. Galoshes. Yeah, galoshes are another word for rain boots, so boots that you wear when it is raining so that your feet don't get wet. Yes, galoshes. Galoshes. And we have although. Although. Uh-huh, and nearly. 
nearly. Yeah, so with an E sound, nearly. Nearly. Yes, and bootlaces. Bootlaces. Boot, so like a boot, like the, the shoe that is the tall shoes that you wear. And then laces are the strings that you use to tie them, boot, like a shoelace. But this is a bootlace. Try again, bootlaces. Bootlaces, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. All right, thank you. And Juan, you will be next. Okay. Yeah, you'll do... Can you put the link again, please? Because I can't see it. Oh, okay. Um, this is in the Google chat box, so you have a... Yeah, but I, I can't see okay. it. Okay, here, here it is one more time. Okay. Do you have it now? No. Hmm, I, okay. I, I see the chat on my right, but I cannot... Oh, okay, you are in Verbling chat. There are actually two chats here. Ah, okay. We have verb here it is in Verbling ah, chat. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Now okay. I, see, I see it now. Okay, good, good. Okay. All right, good. And yeah. let's see, we also have Kamal. Hello. I think he's frozen. Kamal, can you hear me? I'll let that load. Okay. Um, Julian, you are up. Yeah. Okay, we'll go to from the next part, ginger and pickles, ginger and, and pickles. we'll read down until uh, reply ginger gloomily. Ginger? Ah, okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. okay. Ginger and pickles were the people who kept the shop. Ginger was a yellow tomcat, and pickles was a terrier. A terrier is a kind of dog. The rabbits were always a little bit afraid of pickles. The shop was also patronized by mice. Only the mice were rather afraid of ginger. Ginger usually requested pickles to serve them because he said it made his mouth water. I cannot bear, said he, to see them going out at the door carrying their little parcels. A parcel is a package or a bag. So they have like a parcel of groceries. It's like a bag of groceries. I have the same feeling about rats, replied Pickles, but it would never do to eat our own customers. They would leave us and go to Tabitha Twitchett's. On the contrary, they would go nowhere, replied Ginger gloomily. So go ahead and read that back okay. to me. I'll try. Uh, Ginger and Pickles were the people who kept the shop. Ginger was a yellow tomcat and Pickles was a terrier. The rabbits were always a little bit afraid of Pickles. The shop was also patronized by mice. Only the mice were rather afraid of Ginger. Ginger usually requested Pickles to serve them because he said it made his mouth water. I cannot bear, said he, to see them going out at the door carrying their little parcels. I have the same feeling about rats, replied Pickles, but it would never do to eat our own customers. They could leave us and go to Tavina Richards. On the contrary, they could go home nowhere, replied Ginger Gullumbly. Good, thank you. Uh, say the word yellow for me. Yellow. Uh huh. And bit. Bit. Mm hmm. And sorry. Um, rather. Rather. Yes. Requested. 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 Uh huh. And now we have two words. We have in that same sentence. We have it made. You can. If you can kind of make it um, more like one word. So instead of it made, it to made, say it made. It made. Yes. And then carrying. Carrying. Uh-huh. And this last word is gloomily. Glo gloomily. Yeah, so that means like kind of sadly saying something okay. gloomily. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. And Kamal, you Kamal, you have an ex, a lot of extra noise in the background. Check your microphone, Kamal. 
Okay, it looks like maybe he's in a, a store. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's like at a, at a shopping mall or something. Uh, we have Oscar, welcome back. Hey. I, hi. Hi, yeah. teacher. Hi, I'm fine. You? I'm fine, thanks. Good, good. Um, Oscar, do you need the link for this? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I'll put it in the Verbling chat. So the, if you want to look at your own browser, you can do that. Okay, yeah, so gloomily means um, sad, something very, he re replied sadly. She's sad about that. Okay, um, Oscar, do you have it now? Yes. Okay, you will be next. And we have this uh, parentheses, Tabitha Twitchit, and then go down to um, till, called the till. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Tabitha Twitchett kept the only other shop in the village. She did not give credit. Ginger and Pickles gave unlimited credit. Now the meaning of credit is this. When a customer buys a bar of soap, instead of the customer pulling out a purse and paying for it, she says she will pay another time. And Pickles makes a low bow and says, with pleasure, madam, and it is written down in a book. The customers come again and again, and by quantities, in spite of being afraid of ginger and pickles. But there is no money in what is called the till. So in this, this very last word, it says till. A till is part of a cash register where you put money in it if you are working at a store. And yes, go ahead. David Twitch kept the only other job in the village. She did not give credit. Ginger and Pickle got an emailed credit. Now the mint of credit is this. When a customer buys a bar of soap instead of a customer pulling out a purse and paying for it, she says, she will pay another time, and Pycroft makes a log bob and says, with pleasure, madam, and it is written down in book. The customers come again and, uh, and again. It is, uh, I don't screen, ah, I see, I, see. I don't ask, uh, I lost, and those, yeah. I buy quantities in spice of being afraid of ganger and pickles, but there is no money in what is called the tail. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Let's do the word shop. Cha. Shop. Shop. Yeah, so more of a sh sound, shop. Shop. Yes, good. And village. 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 Yeah, that's a hard consonant. Village. Village. Yeah, yeah. So try try more with the v sound. Um, let me turn my screen share off. When you, for a lot of um, if, you, if English is your second language, then the v sound can be very hard. If you're saying v, it's like your teeth are against your bottom lip. Village. Village. Yeah. There you go. Good. Good. <laughs> Since. Yeah. That's instead of with a b sound with village, we are looking for village. So mm -hmm. it's kind of it's like you're you're tickling your lower lip. Village. Village. Yeah, village. Okay, good. All right, and we have the word customer. 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 And now say customers. Customer. And go back. To singular one customer. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Customers. Uh huh. And now one customer, customer. Customer. Uh huh. And then says. Sex. Says. Says. And another. Another. 
Pickles. Pickles. And now this word here is madam. The madam. the math part is the strong part. Madam. Madam. Ah, sí, sí. Yeah. In French, in French is madam. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So the so here in English we say madam. Sí. Madam. Yes. Good. And then pleasure. Pleasure. Mhm. Mm and now look down to in spite. In spite. Let's try it saying spite. Spite. Yeah, so not a spite, but spite. A spite. Spite. A spite. Make a s sound first. Spite. Spite. Yes. Now say in spite. In spite. Very close. In Thanks. spite. In spite. You're so close. Try just saying spite. Just spite by itself. I don't know. Uh, say just only by. Uh, sorry, say the word spite. Say spite. Say spite. 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 And at the beginning of the word, the first sound in the word spite is s spite. 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 Yes, and Thanks. now try it with in spite. In spite. Yeah, very close. In spite. In spite. Yes, so for you, practice saying those words that start with an S very slowly, and then that'll, that will help a lot. All right, thank uh, you. Sense, sense. Okay, um, Umberto, you will be next. Teacher, sorry. Uh, teacher. Uh huh. I have a question. Uh, okay. Please uh, pronounce uh, quan quantities. Yes. Uh, T or uh, D sound. Yes, quantities is T sounds. Quantities. Okay. Yeah, okay. so both. Sometimes in English, if you have a T, it sounds like a D, like mm -hmm. the word. Uh, I'll type this in verbling chat. The word little is more pronounced like L-I-D-D-L-E, like with a D sound, little. But in quantities, you use T sounds. So quantities and not quantities. Quantities is what we say for that. So definitely, in English, sometimes you say a D instead of a T, but in the word quantities, it is a T sound. That's a good question. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh -huh. All right, uh, Umberto, you will do the next part. Okay. We have the customers came in crowds, and we'll go down to um, dog license. The customers came in crowds every day and bought quantities, especially the toffee customers. But there was always no money. They never paid for as much as a penny worth of peppermints. But the sales were enormous, ten times as large as Tabitha Twitchett's. As there was always no money, Ginger and Pickles were obliged to eat their own goods. Pickles ate biscuits, and Ginger ate a dried haddock. A haddock is a kind of fish. They ate them by candlelight after the shop was closed. When it came to Jan, Jan it's a short for January, so I'm going to say the whole month. When it came to January 1st, there was still no money, and Pickles was unable to buy a dog license. Okay. Okay, okay. it's a very difficult paragraph. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do your best. <laughs> okay. It, the customers came in crowds every day and bought quantities, especially to to toothy customers. But there was always no money. They never paid for as much as a pay worth of peppermints. But the sales were enormous, ten times as large as Tavina 
three weeks. As there was always no money, Ginger and Pickets were obli obliged to eat their own goods. Pickles ate biscuits and Ginger ate a dried hot dog. They ate them by can't like after the shop was closed. When it came to January 1st, there was still no money, and Pickles was enabled to buy a dog li license. Okay, thank you. The first sentence we have the word crowds. Crowds. Yes. And then this word is toffee. Toffee. Toffee is a kind of candy. So people that are toffee customers, people that buy candy. Um, and then money. Money. Mm -hmm. Money. And peppermints. Peppermints. Yeah, peppermints is another kind of candy. Peppermints. And we have enormous. 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 Uh huh. Enormous means big, really big. And obliged. Obliged. Yes. So in this sentence, Ginger and Pickles were obliged to eat their own goods. That means that they had to eat their own goods. They must eat their own goods. They had an obligation to eat their own goods. That they had no choice. That's what they had to do. Um, and we have biscuits. Biscuits. Bis it looks like we have a, a U and an I, but the way we pronounce that is biscuits. Just an I sound in both syllables is biscuits. Biscuits. Yeah, biscuits are like biscuits. little pieces of bread. And haddock. Haddock. Uh huh. And a haddock is a fish. And candlelight. 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 Yes. Thank you. And, okay. We have Khan in our class. Hello. Uh, hello. Did I say your name right? Is it Khan? No. Uh, in Turkish, John. John. Okay. Yes. Okay. I will write that down. You can help me with my pronunciation, too. <laughs> we are reading a to the story in the Verbling chat box so that you can see it on your own browser if you want. Um, um, but I use iPad. Uh, I can't see anything now. Okay. Um, look at the chat box, the Verbling chat box. There is a link in it, and you can open the link and see the story instead of my screen if you want. Pardon. I tried. Okay. Um, I'll give you a couple minutes. I'll give you a few minutes to get that open. And Joy, you will read the next part. Yes. Okay. We'll go to It is Very Unpleasant. And then we'll do um, down to the second reply, Ginger. It is very unpleasant. I am afraid of the police, said Pickles. It is your own fault for being a terrier. I do not require a license, and neither does Kep, the collie dog. So here she's saying that the government wants dogs that are terriers. A terrier is a kind of dog. That kind of dog needs to have a license. It needs to have a certain identification. It needs some kind of ID. But other kinds of dogs, like Kep, the collie dog, they do not need, they do not require a license. It is very uncomfortable. I am afraid I shall be summoned. I have tried in vain to get a license upon credit at the post office, said Pickles. The place is full of policemen. I met one as I was coming home. Let us send in the bill again to Samuel Whiskers, Ginger. He owes 22 9 for bacon. 
I do not believe that he intends to pay at all, replied Ginger. And I feel sure that Anna Maria pockets things. Where are all the cream crackers? You have eaten them yourself, replied Ginger. Okay, Joy, go it ahead. Is, okay. It is very unpleasant. I am afraid of the police, said Pickles. It is your own fault for bringing a tutorial. I do not require a, a license, and neither does keep, keep, keep the collie dog. It is very uncomf uncomfortable. I am afraid I shall be summoned. I have tried in vain to get a license up on credit at the art post office said Pinkles. The press is full of policemen. I met one as I was coming home. Let us send in the bill. Again is some more whiskers. Ginger has owed twenty two nine for bake for bacon. I do not believe that he intends the to pay at all replied Ginger, and I felt sure that Anna Maria pockets things. Where are all the cream crackers? You have eaten them yourself, replied Ginger. Okay, thank you. Let's do the first sentence. We have the word afraid. Afraid? Uh-huh. And... In the second line, we have collie. That's just a kind of dog. Mm -hmm. Collie. Uh huh. And uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Uh huh. And then this word is summoned. Summoned. Yes. Yeah, so he's uh, scared that he will be summoned. Like someone will ask him to come to the police. Summoned. Summoned. Uh huh. And then, um, bacon. Bacon's. Oh, Just sorry. A, yeah. Bacon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, it's okay. <laughs> bacon is a kind of meat. Uh -huh. So somebody bought bacon, but they still owe money. They still have to pay for it. Um, and then we have feel. 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 E. Feel. Feel. And sure. Sure. Uh huh. And now say, and I feel sure. And I feel sure. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Okay. We have um, John. Is your is your um, can you see the story now? John. I I see. Okay, can you, uh, you can read the next part. You will go at, um, it starts with Ginger and Pickles retired into the back parlor. And then we'll go down to a policeman writing in a notebook. Uh, I try to find. Okay. And because retire in into the back parlor. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. I will read first, and then you can read back to me. You will read after me. Ginger. Okay. okay. Ginger and Pickles retired into the back parlor. They did accounts. They added up sums and sums and sums. Samuel Whiskers has run pale. He has had an ounce and three quarters of snuff since October. What is seven pounds of butter at one third and a stick of sealing wax and four matches? Send in all the bills again to everybody with comps, replied Ginger. If something is with comps, that means it has something that is free with it. After a time, they heard a noise in the shop, 
as if something had been pushed in at the door. They came out of the back parlor. There was an envelope lying on the counter and a policeman writing in a notebook. Okay, so read that part back to me. And same? Yes. Same? Okay. Ginger and Piggles uh, retired into the back parlor. They did accounts. Uh, they added up sums and sums and sums. Samuel Whiskers has run up a deal as long as his tile. Uh, he has had a ounce and three quarters of the enough uh, since October. What is seven points pounds of the but, uh, butch butter at one third uh, and a stick of sealing wax and four matches. Uh, sending all the bill, all the bills again to everybody with with uh, Compt Ripley Ginger. Uh, after a time, they heard a noise in the shop, as if something had been pushed in at the door. They came out of the back parlor. Uh, there was an an wolf and. Um, and world lying on the counter and the policeman writing in a notebook. All right, thank you. The word in the first sentence here is retired. Retired. Yes, and then say tail. Tail. And pounds. Pounds. Butter. Butter. Yeah, so butter has two T's in it, but we have a D sound when we say it. We say butter. Butter. Uh-huh. And then matches. Matches. Yes. Again. M matches. Uh-huh. And now say the word again. Uh, matches. Yes. Uh, now, looking, looking down at the next line, this is a different word, but the word is again. We have uh, send in all the bills again. Again? again? Yes, again. <laughs> there we go. Again. Okay. Uh-huh. And then replied. Replied. And um, we also have envelope. Envelope. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next part, um, we'll have Julen. You will okay. read the next uh, part. First, one question. What's yes. the difference between tail and tail? I wrote it in the chat. Okay, um, hang on. When is a story yes. and where is tail? Yeah. Yeah, this is in the Google chat. This uh, T A I L means the like an animal has a tail, yeah. like a cat. The long, the part that comes out of its back, long, yeah. long tails, and then T A L E tail means story. But they are they are the similar. Not when they you they are them? you pronounce them the same. The they same. Are, they oh, sound okay. the same. Yeah, tail yes. and tail. Yes. Okay. So T A I L is a part of an animal, and T A L E is a story. So okay. this is a tale of. I'll write this down. This is a tale of ginger and pickles, and then also, if you use the other one, T A I L. Ginger has a tail because she is a cat. So you you only difference them because of the context. Yes, context and spelling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. So you are next. You will do. Let's see. How much do we have? Oh, we have a lot. Okay. So we'll do pickles. Nearly had a fit, and then you go down to, but the envelope remained. Mm -hmm. Pickles nearly had okay. Pickles, I'll go first. Pickles nearly had a fit. He barked and he barked and made little rushes. Bite him, Pickles, bite him! Spluttered Ginger behind a sugar barrel. He's only a German doll. The policeman went on writing in his notebook. Twice he put his pencil in his mouth, and once he dipped it in the treacle. Pickles barked till he was hoarse, but still the policeman took no notice. He had bead eyes, and his helmet was sewed on with stitches. At length, on his last little rush, 
Pickles found that the shop was empty. The policeman had disappeared, but the envelope remained. Okay. <clears throat> Pickles nearly had a fit. He barked and barked and made little rushes. Bite him, Pickles, bite him, spluttered Ginger behind a sugar barrel. He's only a German doll. The policeman went on writing in his notebook. Twice he put his pencil in his mouth, and once he dipped it in the trickle. Pickle barked till he was hoarse, but still the policeman took no notice. notice. He had big eyes, and his helmet was sewed on his uh, uh, sewed on with stitches. At length, on his last little rush, Pickles found that the shop was empty. The policeman had disappeared, but the envelope remained. Thank you. First sentence we have fit, fit, and then um, barrel, barrel. Barrel. Now say sugar barrel. Sugar barrel. Yeah, so barrel of sugar. Sugar barrel. Sugar barrel. And notebook. Notebook. And this one is a uh, more note. Note. Let me think. Notebook. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay. You don't have to have so much on the T. The the B is the most important. Uh, notebook. Notebook. Uh huh. And then. Um, notice. Notice. Yeah, that's another T that sounds like yeah. V. Notice. 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 And sewed. Sewed. What, what does it mean? Sewed. sewed? To sewed is a verb. To sew is a verb, and yeah. to sew is um like making clothes. Maybe uh, um okay. yeah, you take thread. Um, hang on. I will turn this screen share off. Okay, so for example, if something is sewed, like the this is um, thread on my yeah. on my jacket, it is sewed. It's like you you take uh, thread and you you like, make you okay. make clothes. Yeah, that's sewed. So in okay in the story, um, we have. His helmet was sewed on with stitches. That means his okay. helmet is attached. Like somebody took thread and they sewed okay. it. And stitches is the, yeah, the thing that you use. Yeah. For, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, okay. that's that word is pronounced sewed. Sewed. Yes. And then found. Found. Yes. All right. And disappeared. Disappeared. Uh huh. Good. Thank you. Okay. And Oscar, you will be next. Yes. We'll do, but the you go. Do you think that he has gone down to um, refuse to give credit? Do you think that he has gone to fetch a real live policeman? I am afraid it is a summons," said Pickles. So there's that word summons again. He's afraid that the policeman is going to come in and make him go to the police station, make him go and um, get in trouble. No, replied Ginger, who had opened the envelope. It is the rates and taxes, L3, 19, 11, and 3 quarters. No, uh, this is the last straw, said Pickles. Let us close the shop. They put up the shutters and left, but they have not removed from the neighborhood. In fact, some people wish they had gone further. Ginger is living in the Warren. I don't know what occupation he pursues. He looks stout and comfortable. A Warren is like a place where animals live. Uh, Pickles is at present a gamekeeper. The closing of the shop caused great inconvenience. Tabitha Twitchett immediately raised the price of everything a half penny, and she continued to refuse to give credit. So if you refuse to give credit, that means that you you make everybody pay when they buy something. So you can't pay later. You have to pay now. So the shop closes. They have too many taxes. This taxes are L3, 19, 
11 and 3 quarters. 3 quarters, 3 with the slash and a 4 is 3 quarters. Um, yeah, so they, they get an envelope. They have a lot of taxes. They have to pay a lot of money. He says, this is the last straw. That's an expression that we use to say that, that that's enough. That is too much. And so they close. Ginger moves. They li lives in a warren, a place where animals live. Pickles is a gamekeeper, somebody that takes care of an outside place, some place outdoors. And then Tabitha Twitchett owns another store, and she made everything more expensive. She raised the price, and she refused to give credit. You have to pay immediately. You have to pay now. Okay, so Oscar, this will be for you. Yes. Do you think that he has gone to fish a real lake policeman? I'm afraid it is a summons, said Pickles. No, Ripple Ginger, who had opened the envelope. It is the race and thesis L3911-34. This is last straight, said Pickles. Let us close the shot. They put at the children and left. But they have no remote from the neighbor. In fact, some people wish they had gone further. Ginger is living in the warren. I don't know snow what occupation the persons he loves stoves and uncomforted. Pickles is a present and game piece. The closing of the show caused great inconvenience. David Twitch immediately raises the price of everything a half penny, and she continues or reef to give credit. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Let's do fetch. Fetch. Fetch is another word for to get. Did she go to get a live policeman? Fetch. Fetch. Uh-huh. And then replied. Replied. Taxes. 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 Uh-huh. And then say this phrase for me. This is the last straw. This is the last straw. Last straw. Last straw. Yes. This is the last straw. This is the last straw. Uh-huh. And then shutters. 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 Yeah. Shutters are like um, something that covers a window so that people can't look inside. Shutters. Shutters. And neighborhood. 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 Yes. And then... We have um, occupation. Occupation. And comfortable. <laughs> Repeat, please. <laughs> comfortable. Comfortable. Yeah, so it looks like comfortable, but it is pronounced comfortable. 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 That's a hard one. Comfortable. Comfortable. Very close. Uh, let's have everyone practice that one. That is a more difficult yes. word. Uh, let's see. Um, John, please say comfortable. Comfortable. Okay. Uh, John, please say try that one. Comfortable. Com comfortable. 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 <laughs> comfortable. Yeah. And Umberto, try comfortable. 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 And then joy, comfortable. Yes. Comfortable. And Julian? Comfortable. Com it's difficult. Comfortable. Yeah. Comfortable. Comfortable. Yeah, so the middle part of the word, it's, we have comfortable with C-O-M-F-O-R-T. This comfortable is this part right here is you don't say that too much. It's kind of like, I, I will type this out in chat. Comfortable. 
Oh, sorry. Typo. Don't look at that one. Come. Come. Comfortable. It's like that. Comfortable. Comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So not comfortable, but comfortable. I see. Comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Comfortable. Comfortable. Yeah. Comfortable. Uh, yeah. Oscar, one more time. Comfortable. Comfortable. Very close. Comfortable. Comfortable. Yeah. Try try getting that F sound more. Comfortable. Comfortable. Yes. Good. Same. All right. Let's try. Maybe we can get close to the end. Uh, we'll have um, Umberto, you will go next. And we'll go, of course, there are trades, and you'll go down to brought back to her with complaints. I think we can finish this. Of course, there are trades. Men's cards, the butcher, the fishman, and Timothy Baker. But a person cannot live on seed wigs and sponge cake and butter buns, not even when the sponge cake is as good as Timothy's. After a time, Mr. John Dormouse and his daughter began to sell peppermints and candles, but they did not keep self-fitting sixes, and it takes five mice to carry one seven-inch candle. Besides, the candles which they sell behave very strangely in warm weather, and Miss Dormouse refused to take back the ends when they were brought back to her with complaints. Of course, they are they are the trades men cards, the butcher, the fisherman, and Tommy Baker, but a person cannot live on sweet wings and spawn cake and butter buns, not even when the spawn cake is a good in Timot. After a time, Mr. John Dermos and his daughter be began to sell peppermints and candles, but they did not keep self-fitting sixes, and it takes five mice to, car to carry on seven-inch candle. Besides, the candles which they sell behave very strange in warm weather. And Miss Dormus refused to take back and ends when they were brought back to her with complaints. All right. This name here is Timothy. Timothy. Yeah. And then Liv. Liv. Yes. Yeah, so there's... Two ways to pronounce L-I-V-E. In this one, to live is a verb, is live. Another way you can pronounce that is live, but it has a different meaning. It means um, like maybe you go to live music, music that is in front of you. Yeah, but in this case, it is a verb, live, so we pronounce it as live and not live. Um, and then this is sponge cake. Sponge cake. And peppermints. Peppermints. Yes. And then behave. Behave. Yeah, so to behave means uh, like the way that you act. So the, the candles behave strangely in warm weather. Maybe they are melting. They are doing something very weird. Okay, um, if you guys want to stay one more minute, we can finish the poem. Uh, we'll have John, you will do this next part, the very end. Um, and when Mr. John Dormouse was complained to, he stayed in bed and would say nothing but very snug, which is not the way to carry on a retail business. So everybody was pleased when Sally Henny Penny sent out a printed poster to say that she was going to reopen the shop. Henny's opening sale... Grand Cooperative Jungle, Penny's Penny Prices, Come Buy, Come Try, Come Buy. The poster really was the most enticing. That's a short for enticing. It means you really like it. You want to, you are attracted to it. There was a rush upon the opening day. The shop was crammed with customers, and there were crowds of mice upon the biscuit canisters. Sally Henny Penny gets rather flustered, when she tries to count out the change, and she insists on being paid cash, but she is quite harmless. 
and she has laid in a remarkable assortment of bargains. There is something to please everybody. The end. Very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we actually are. Oh, this is. It's later than I thought. Yeah. So, but we finished the story. Um, I hope you liked it, and I hope that you improved your pronunciation in this practice. I do these um, several times a week, so you can follow me on Verbling, and you can see when I do more of these. Um, in two hours, I am doing a class on writing, and we work on writing an invitation. So if you want, are interested in working on writing in English, we will be doing that in two hours. And if not, I hope you have a good day, and I hope to see you soon. Okay. Thank All right. You, bye. 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 Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you so much.